Hello everyone, I'm Matt, or Gum Mallow, the GM of our Twitch stream. Thank you for listening to this episode of Calturnia, our homebrew 5e campaign. We play live weekly on Mondays at 7.30pm Eastern over on Twitch, using Tailspire to provide high quality visuals to go along with this adventure. Enjoy episode 1, it all begins with a character or two. Hello, player friends joining us this evening. Hello! Um, so, for character introductions, we're going to be doing something a little different than our normal format. Uh, the first 30 minutes will be dedicated to one player, with the following 30 minutes dedicated to another player. And then we will have a one-hour session with these two players interacting. So, Madison... If you would like to say hello and introduce your character. All right, so I'm Madison, or Mr. Skips, as many of you know me at this point. I will be playing as Yulia Griswold, a variant tiefling who's training to become a cleric. All right, and uh, Kate, we will bother you in about 30 minutes. It sounds good to me. Wrong. So looking back on what we talked about, yeah. Um, Yulia, as you are wandering around exploring the confines of your town, you come across a woman that you haven't encountered before, or in fact, seen anywhere near town. A very tall, blonde haired woman with the faint marking of wings floating behind her. She moves about pretty swiftly um, as someone who is experienced in the field and makes a quick glance and notes your position before nodding to you and almost beckoning for you to come over. I just, I look, I turn around and look behind me in case she's uh, pointing to somebody else. Nope, she does clarify. She, like, you do the, uh, the, me? What, me? And she nods and points to you again and beckons for you to come over. Okay, well, I walk over. All right. So, walking over to meet her. And just for reference, I, like, I'm six foot four, I am purple, and I have bat wings. So, <laughs> I'm not exactly normal. You are not. Uh, you... You tend to match the vague aesthetic of the people that live here in the convent that you're staying with. Or living with, I should say, rather than staying. I, I do live here. <laughs> you do live here! And what is the name of the town you live in? I have to look this up. <laughs> <laughs> this is a quiz that I was not prepared for. I know. Wave me. That's where we're from, right? Wave me. Okay. So your location is set in the northwestern part of Calturnia, where you are technically a beach town. However, the mountains between you and the remainder of the continent serve as a steady divider that has prevented <laughs> your village from expanding much beyond the religious theocracy and edging on cultish portions. So it is very strange to see not only someone new, but someone that looks nothing like anyone that would be here. Yeah, we're just a whole bunch of tieflings. So as you approach... This mature older woman. <laughs> yep. She looks at you and is like, my, my dear, are you quite well? Yeah, I, I think so. Do I, do I not look well? I, I mean, I know the, like purple isn't a normal skin tone, but I assure you this, like, I'm not, this isn't, this is fine. I'm okay. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not concerned about the purple. That's, that's quite all right. I just, you look concerned. Are you sure that you are where you belong? With all due respect, I... Sorry, I didn't get your name, ma'am. Names mean so many important things to... Consider me 
a friend. Stranger danger. <laughs> Stranger danger. Well, I... Pardon me, and I, I mean no offense to this, but you seem a little out of place right now. It, it's not me, it's you. <laughs> it's not me, it's you. So, yes, yes, I, I do understand. This isn't traditionally some place that I believe he would have sent me. He? Uh, yes. Have you ever heard of Suburban? I mean, yeah. That, like, I throw my hand back, pointing towards the commune, and, like, I, I live on a place where we worship him. And what do they teach you of him? Uh, that he's a deity of peace and freedom and goodwill towards others as long as they're not human. I'm afraid the inhuman part may have been exaggerated, but you're not wrong. And at times, he sends us to seek out those who might be most pious and supportive of him. Do you find yourself to be such a person? I mean, I identify pretty greatly with his ideals. Yeah. I can also fly, which I've heard is a bonus with him. Yes, and uh, she chuckles, kind of turns pensive for a moment. Flight certainly is uh, a penchant of his. I you can may see... call me Aaron, and your Aaron. name? Uh, my name is Yulia. Yulia Griswold. Yulia. I see. And what brings you out to the beaches this day? Do you not wish to uh, be with your family? I'm, I'm told Wave Meat is quite the familial commune. Yeah, I'm just out for a wander. I like to stretch my wings once in a while. Fair enough. I mean, who doesn't like to move about and stretch and... And, uh... She tosses something in your direction. Is it candy? I'm not gonna take it. <laughs> uh, it is, I take it. It is it. not candy. It is a small coin. I just kind of flip it around in my hands. Okay. Um, so looking at the coin, it's slightly different than anything you may have encountered, strictly because the edges of the coin itself are feathered. And you see an Eric Cochran face emblazoned on the front. It's one I readily recognize. It is one you readily recognize. But oh, wow. in this moment, something about the coin stands out to you compared to the coins you've seen some of the higher priests in town carry. It winks at me. No. The feathered edge on the coin is actually feathers as opposed to the dense, almost lead-like coins that <clears throat> you've seen worn by the priesthood. I'd bite it. <laughs> I mean, it tastes like feathers. <laughs> but it feels like a coin. But it feels like a coin. I look back up at... Well, probably not back up. I'm six foot four and probably taller than she is. You stand eye to eye with this woman. Okay, so she's fucking tall, too. Or... Yep. What is this? Have you ever questioned the faith of those that live here? I mean, it's a bunch of stodgy old men most of the time, but I, I didn't see any real reason to question what they're telling me. And does what they do match what they say? Well... We're supposed to bring freedom and peace out into the world, but I feel like we're kind of cloistered here. We don't leave all that often. I mean, my father did, but he never came back. And do you think that is right? Do you think that is fitting with his teachings? No, I... Well... I'm not sure, but I don't think it does. And have you ever seen another in town to bear such a symbol, and she points to the coin that you're holding. I can't rightly say that I have, ma'am. 
Now, if you think that what they're teaching doesn't match with what they're doing, and you've never encountered someone with a true symbol of Suburban, what holds you in this place? Oh, my mom and my little sister. Family can be quite the important tie. And if Do you have any family was to leave. I if she was to leave, I mean she's she's younger than I am. I can't imagine her doing that. I'm certain you could imagine a great many things if you only put your mind to it. Do you have family? Here and there. Depends on what you call family. Like blood relations? I found that blood relations are tiresome and generally untrustworthy, unfortunately. I prefer those that I choose to be around rather than those I'm told to be around. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> so emotional. I I'm sorry, what did you... What did you want? <laughs> Just to speak. To see okay. where, where your thoughts lie. I believe there is much good you could do outside of this place, and... I truly don't believe he would have sent me to you without real thought and provocation. So you're saying I should leave this place? I'm saying, perhaps, the time has come for you to find the truth in what Suburban has to offer. Are you telling me I should spread my wings? Yes. <laughs> perhaps. And you watch as she actually stretches out her own wings. So is she like an Asimar or a Celestial? Um... I will say she is a half celestial. Okay. Closer to a Deva than an Asimar. Many so who are okay. in service to him find that to find peace, they need to depart the place they are from. Mm, that's a very big ask to make of somebody you've just met. I, I, my life is here, my family's here. I know that I need to spread the go this gospel of freedom, but that's a big choice for me right now. I don't disagree, but think well on what is offered. And she teleports away. <laughs> and you watch as her wings enclose over her. And with a falling of feathers, you see them shaped similar to a coin, but three feet in diameter, laying on the ground before the wind blows them away. All right, then. And I just, uh, like, completely unconscious of what I was doing before I rush home. You rush home? Yeah. Okay. So, moving home at top speed, you hear raised voices from inside the house as we shift over to Kate. Would you like to go ahead and introduce your character? So, my name is Kate, also known as Cool Blue Pixie, or just Pixie to the people on here. I am playing as Zira Griswold, which is Yulia's little sister. Um, she is a tiefling rogue. And yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> Yulia, as you return home, you hear the raised voice of your mother as it appears that recently Zira has come home. Where's she been? Um, so, Zira, your mother confronts you holding a broken piece of stone 
and says, what is this? What, what, a, what, why? A daughter that I raised? Why do you have these things? As she shakes the stone at you. Why are you going through my things? You are in my home. You live where I provide for you. This is, why are you doing this in, in, in our life? You would greatly displease suburban. Were they to find out, the elders would see you removed. What do I care if I'm removed? Why do you not care? Does this- Because- because I was never happy here. I cannot believe it. The, the things my own daughter would say to me. First, your father leaves, and now we have this? this? Why do you think he left? <gasps> How dare you? Is there something you mean to imply? Why can't you do as your sister does? Wear normal clothes. Spend time with family. Go to worship. Why would I spend time with people I don't like being around, where they don't treat me as a person? How much more can... What more can I do to show you that you are a person? But you're bringing shame upon our family. Maybe stop comparing me to my sister. But she's the ideal example. She makes time for us. There is no ideal example. Everyone is different. You, everyone here? No. Everyone in town is the same. <laughs> it's you that stands out. You, child, that will not listen. That will not attend service. Refuses to wear... What even is this you're wearing? You look like a common brigand. It's what I like to wear. And you care not for the shame this brings. It means nothing to you. Why would I care about shame that I bring when I'm just being myself? And instead of honor and peace, you wish thievery? Yep. <laughs> I don't... <sighs> I don't even know where to begin with you. Why are you still in town then, if you feel this way? I can leave. And what would I say? What would happen when... When the neighbors ask, where has my daughter gone? See, it's always about you. It's always keeping up appearances with you. We have a position to maintain in this town. I am one of the church elders. How good does it look to have to have statues to a, a goddess of thieves? It's my choice. Perhaps, but I think you'll find that your choice has been disassembled. Yes, because you broke everything. And uh, she shows you to your room where the altar itself has been pushed to the floor with various idols and candles broken in her haste to take it apart. And who taught you this? Where do you find these things? Books. What books? <laughs> she almost, almost seems surprised that you can read. <laughs> Nothing wow. against either of your characters. But it is, I'm... <laughs> it is not a useful skill in town unless you are a higher ranking clergy member. I'd like to think that at first when I came, like, I'm hiding outside as like sneakily as I can. And at first I was like mortified, but now I'm laughing a little bit. <laughs> what are you laughing about? <laughs> I like, I'm hearing my little sister stand up for herself and that like, and my mom is just going crazy with it, so... <laughs> That's fair. I'm chuckling a little bit at how high her voice is getting as she gets louder. <laughs> so this is it. This is what you do. You you flit about and read and and <laughs> learn about thieves and wear your, your dark clothing and... Where did you even get some of these? And she holds out a small bag of coins. We don't have money. 
We don't keep these things. They belong with the church. They provide for us. How? They provide for you, maybe. They provide the food that we eat, the clothing that most of us wear. Your sister certainly knows. Where is she anyways? She was attending to services. I assume that is the excuse that you gave your mother to go and do whatever you want. Oh, definitely. <laughs> She's more likely to believe me than she is Zira. So what... What am I supposed to do with you? How, I, you clearly can't be left alone. I'm going to have to have your sister watch your every movement. Oh, no. <laughs> what, what would you have me do? You're worshipping these false idols. You bring heathen behavior into our homes. Is it really a false idol if I believe in it? Are we, starting, are we starting theological discussions with your mother now? It's like, yes, it is a false idol. We worship suburban in this house, in this town, and in this family. Well, maybe I don't want to be part of this family. And my yeah. heart just drops a little bit. <laughs> if that is your choice, then consider yourself gone. And she starts pocketing the bags of assorted stolen things that you have squandered behind this altar. All of these things will find their ways back to their rightful owner, and and the coins will be donated to the church, and we will not speak of this again. Get changed and prepare yourself for dinner. Fine. And uh, she goes to step outside and almost runs into you, Yulia. Oh, mom. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Uh, uh, how was services? Uh, great. Really cool. Uh, I can. I have. I have something I need to show you. I have something I need to show you too. I'm. I, I'm afraid that Zira has gone out of control this time. Oh, mom. She's not. She's just growing up. She's growing with the wrong people. She was reading. I mean, yeah, you, you taught me how to read scripture, too. I don't see the problem here. She was she was reading the words of false deities. Oh, wait. So they're like made up gods. She stole things from people. I mean, were they like bad people? <laughs> That is not the point. I, this is my nine, like my, yeah, my nine intelligence shining through right now. <laughs> I don't understand. We, you have always done what you're told. Why can't she just follow your example? I, well, she's her own person, isn't she? Maybe she shouldn't be. I, wait, what do you mean? Look how we all survive here. All of us together, the commune cares for everyone. And Zira just can't understand, she says, yelling back into the door. And the door slams, I think. <sighs> We're getting ready for dinner. Asked her to go change. Please just help her. I, I need you to but watch I, her. I, I I have something I need to show you though. After after dinner, I'm it's not the right time. And she brushes you off as she goes to collect food for dinner. I knock lightly on the door and I'm like, Zira, are you in there? No. <laughs> Can I come in? I guess. I, I gently open the door up and I like I have to lower my head to get in and with my wings so I don't smack either of them. And, I don't know. Is there anywhere to sit in here besides the bed? Yeah, so essentially where you guys are staying is slightly upgraded studio apartment. 
there is a generally defined living space with floor pillows and a small table. Oh, so was there even a door here? Uh, there is a door to the house, but not <laughs> to the overarching space. Okay, so it was more like uh, flavoring then. <laughs> um, so Zira has set up various curtains to hide her bed space and have privacy. Um, as much privacy as can be obtained in this setting. Very little, honestly. Very little, but it is enough to visually hide. And you have come to respect that knocking on the curtains is her preferred method. For... I rustle the curtains to get in. <laughs> and uh, within the curtains, yes, I believe there is a bed. There is a small dresser. And you can see the remains of... Um, what was a very beautiful looking altar now smashed on the floor. Hmm. I pick it up and like I try to reassemble it with like just to get an idea of who it is. Um so picking up the altar is difficult. It's in four or five pieces, but you can clearly see that there are gouged out spots where a symbol would have been. And it seems that your mom really went to town to uh, have that removed. Do I recognize it at all? No, you're looking at like... Pieces. Um, like... Yeah, you ever see somebody like scrape their fingers through clay and scoop mm -hmm. up mud? Yeah. That, that's what it looks like. Damn. Mom really went to town on this. Yeah. So I'm not going to lie. I heard most of that. Oh, you think? <laughs> well, there's very little privacy here, Zira. I'm sure you're aware of that. Mm hmm So you're leaving? I don't know. Well, that sounded pretty final to me. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I just sit next to her and, like, I wrap a wing around her shoulder. I don't know, trying to shield her, maybe? Okay. And uh, you hear the, the rustling from outside the curtain as your mother has come home with a pile of dishes. She's like, all right, it's it's time. Come eat. Um, Mom, just, just give me a moment. While it's warm, please. I, I won't be too long, I promise. And she huffs audibly. <laughs> it's like, fine, it just... Be swift about it. Don't let your sister delay you. She's not delaying me, Mom. So... I think I might be leaving, too. What? Well, I met this lady in town, and she gave me, like, I, I show Zira the coin that she gave me. And, I don't know, she opened my eyes to maybe being able to do more out in the world than staying here and wave meat. You mean like read? I mean, I know how to. Like, <laughs> I know how to read. I just don't. Zira, I know you can read much better than I can. Yep. Yeah, we're not even joking about that. You are smarter than I am. <laughs> but I, I understand enough, okay? Me with what? my second grade. No, you know, I'll be generous and say I can read at like a third or fourth grade competency. Third or fourth grade level. So a lady gives you a magic coin and it makes you want to leave? She didn't just, just, like, she poofed into, like, a thing of feathers and then there was Suburban's face in the ground. Guess and... your faith wasn't very strong either. Well, no, she told me that it's not going to be strong here. So I think maybe I need to go too. Do you have an idea of where you're going to go? Nope. Okay. <laughs> I mean, do you ever have an idea when you steal from people? If they're mean to me, I'm gonna steal from them. Yeah, but... Stealing from them doesn't solve the problem in the first place. I'm well, not it, smart. It I makes me that. feel better. What are you talking about? 
the warrior of peace argues with the thief. <laughs> and you hear your mom in the background clear her throat. She's like, that's enough of this talk. Come along. You need to eat. Okay, well, I, I grab Zira by the hand and see if I can get her to come eat at least. <sighs> come on, it'll, like, I will distract her. Just don't do anything. <laughs> She's going to say something anyway. What? <laughs> and uh, as you sit down, you are both directed to opposite chairs, and Yulia, you find a rather over large portion of food. Whereas Zira, there is strictly enough. There is a piece of biscuit, a little bit of meat and some scarce vegetables. Is there any uh, thing to drink on the table? Yeah, there's water or whatever beverage you would have in your home. And uh, your mother looks at you, Zira, and says, when you decide that you are going to rejoin and follow the tenants you are intended to follow, you may share in the bounty that is shared with us. Until then, oh. you can eat to survive. I'm not sensing a lot of peace in this household right now. <laughs> oh, snap. Oh, snap. There is a pot of tea on the table. And I start pouring myself a glass, and I purposely, like, I try to make it look like I do it on accident, but I spill a little bit on the table. Um, okay. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Mom. Can you get something to clean this up, please? Yes, yes. It's all right. It's all right. It's, it happens all the time, dear. And she, like, pulls her apron and just kind of mops it up quick. <laughs> She's not leaving the table. I know what you're going for. <sighs> Damn it. <laughs> I try to hand Zira a cup of tea. I suppose, in the name of peace, we should share enough with you. Mother, is your own daughter not deserving of kindness once in a while? After what she has done? After what she brought into... I'm still not entirely aware of what's going on, mostly because you kept me in the dark, but like, what happened? And I try to signal to Zira to just eat as quickly as she can. She brought symbols and an altar of a false god, one who does not celebrate peace, but instead thievery and taking what is one's own. Would I be aware of what this god is through my studies? Um, no. Your no. studies okay. in town are very, very specifically cloistered. Okay, structured and limited. Yes. Is, like, is she an evil deity? She barely counts as a deity. There is no one outside of Suburban. I just, I narrow my eyes at that statement. I mean, would I know enough that Suburban is a relatively new god in the Pantheon? Nope. Okay. As god. far as... What the, did I go to cleric school for then? As far as the <laughs> religion in town is relegated to, um... Suburban is the main deity. You are you are existing in a town that is essentially everything revolves around the earth. All things revolve around suburban. There is not a a outside existence. There is no um you know like Oh god. Is the world flat? Se. Um as far as most people care, the world ends at the mountains where wave meat ends. I'm pretty sure that I've gone high enough in the air to see that it's round. Uh, that is irrelevant to what anyone in town thinks. Okay. Like, I've definitely told Zira that I think the world is round. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, uh... Does Suburban have any, like... Aren't we supposed to be tolerant, maybe? You want me to tolerate someone who takes from others and then does nothing? Would you know Wait. she had 13 gold stashed behind that altar? 
Do you know how much I, good that could do? I make a face that's like, I'm not even mad, I'm just impressed at this point. <laughs> uh, it is very impressive. 13 gold is a very, very tidy sum. Uh, Hell for, yeah! <laughs> for a town well, that exists on the, the kindness well, and gifting of others. Like, um, most people in town share crops. There isn't really a use for money. Well, Mom, I, I don't want to say that you're assuming the worst, but how do we know she didn't take it from somebody who was hoarding the gold and planned on giving it to the church? If they were hoarding the gold and giving it to the church, that is where it should have gone. No, no, no. Hoarding it and not giving it to the church. Sorry, I think I misspoke or you misunderstood. Then how would she even find it? Well, she's always had a nose for finding things. That's not a... I suppose there are those who say that Suburban has been enamored with the more glamorous things in life, but that is not who we are. Would I know that he used to hunt for treasure? <laughs> um, not blatantly, like, because that implies that he was a man. So not blatantly in that it would imply that he was once mortal. <laughs> but even now, most symbols to Suburban are gold or some other rare and or shiny metal. So wait, do the priests usually have like fine robes and ornaments and stuff on them usually? Um, fine in terms of what is available to you here, yes. They have like silk robes and gold no, jewelry and stuff like have, that. No, they have clean cloth, and that is a luxury. So I kind of scoff a bit at that, and I'm like, "Well, do our priests really need clean cloth and solid gold pendants for suburban?" Now we could easily get along with Electra, mother. Zero, what have you done to your sister? She hasn't done anything to me. I've just been sitting here. I can't. Yeah, I, I assume the food is just gone at this point. You've eaten it, it's gone. <laughs> yes. Look at what you have done bringing this altar. Even your sister is questioning the teachings now. Mother, please. With the heavy slam of a fist on the table, we transition to a few days have gone by and the two of you are packed and ready to go. Your mother has made herself scarce, knowing that you are leaving and unprepared to face the fact that she feels has failed you. Does she really care if I'm leaving? Uh, that is something we will cover at another point. Okay. And I'm happy you're coming. And, uh, the two of you step out onto the road, having been given directions to head south along the mountains until you find a guarded pass, uh, usually frequented by two of the Queen's men, and they <laughs> can inform you of where to go. As you travel along, it is odd as you steadily move further and further out, eventually hitting a point where every step the two of you take is the farthest you have ever been from home. All right, Mr. Frodo. That's right. No going back now. That's right. Um, what is mostly beach sand and light grass soon makes way for not quite forests, but the beginning of large tree growth. And you find yourselves camping late at night and waking early in the morning. Over the course of one evening, Zira you hear a strange voice calling out to you in your sleep. What is it? You venture for us. You venture for me. Who is this? 
<laughs> Someone you have chosen to see, despite the blinders that are placed on all others. Am I dead? <laughs> no, no, my dear. Not yet, at least. Uh, what? <laughs> you should wake soon, though, for something rummages through your belongings, and I wish for you to keep them. So I, I wake straight up and look around? Yeah, you are immediately wide awake and be a grouping of Raquin looking through yours and Yulia's bags as they have pulled them out of the tent. And uh, seeing you wake up, they kind of stand still for a moment to see if you are actually awake. Am I awake? Uh, not yet. So how would you like to proceed, Zira? So they're still there? They are still there and standing stock still, trying not to get caught. They're not doing a very good job hiding. Her vision is based on movement. <laughs> and not realizing that tieflings can see in the dark. They, uh, they seem to be almost outlined in a moonlit glow as you hear the voice whisper to you. They attempt to take from you. If they succeed, you may not make the journey of where I wish you to be. Do I have my bow at this point? You have whatever you might have left home with. However, it's going to be very crude weapons. It's not going to be anything truly okay. combat ready. Okay. Um, is, is there like a rock around? You could also wake me up. What are you going to do? I'm very You're a peace cleric. <laughs> and very scary. <laughs> not even a cleric yet. No. Huh? Well, I guess I wake up my sister and say, Hey, wake up! <laughs> okay. I'm kind of foggy at this point, but I see a bunch of small raccoon people. You do. You see three small raccoon people rummaging through, um, or that appear to have been caught mid-rummage and are just kind of staring at Zira to see if she has noticed them. Uh, okay, I, I stand up rather quickly. I spread my wings, and I bare my fangs at them. Okay. And, uh, Zira, is there anything you'd like to do? There's like a 12, like, I don't know, 10-foot wingspan behind me at this point. Can I just, like, <laughs> snarl at them? Yeah. Okay, I'll do I that. Mean, we're both tieflings, so we should be, like, sort of scary, I guess. Uh, I mean, you are scarier than you would think. Mm -hmm. As, um... Where, Yulia, you have your wings, you glance at Zira and see her shadow seems to almost stand behind her. And you catch the outline of daggers in her shadow's hand. I'm no scientist, but I don't think the shadow is supposed to do that. <laughs> no, probably not. And the raccoons begin to panic. And one of them grabs a handful of something out of your bag, Yulia. And the three begin to sprint away. Fly after them! Yeah, I'll fly after them. <laughs> okay. Take I'll them down! Up, I'll, I'll pick up a few rocks and start dropping them. <laughs> Taken after Suburban. <laughs> <laughs> so it is written in the Gospel of Burb. In the Gospel of Burb. Um, so you follow Zero's instructions to fly after them and begin to pelt them with rocks as they steadily drop whatever they are holding and cover their head. <laughs> <laughs> Continuing to run away, but whatever they have stolen appears to be on the ground. I gently land, I scoop it up, and I fly back to Zero. Okay. Um... So, you find that they were attempting to steal your travel rations, oh. without which... Those little assholes. You would have I had feel kind to of... turn for home. I feel kind of badly now. What? what if they were what hungry? For? 
Perhaps they were hungry, but if they had taken your food, your options would be to return home or... Eat each other. Or guess uh... where the adventure <laughs> might take you. Ooh, no. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm not going home. I think we should maybe have one person sleep and one person do watch and then switch off at some point. That sounds like a good idea. Okay, uh, I'll take first watch. You can go back to sleep, Sarah. I have no complaints with that. <laughs> so as Zira falls back asleep, you can see where her shadow was before threatening and very imposing. It seems to almost sit next to her, watching as she rests and kind of keeping an eye out. I kind of reach out to the shadow to see if I can get an idea of who or what it is. Um, as soon as you move towards it, even, it dissipates into just being her shadow on the ground. I don't know who you are, but I know you're there. I got my eye on you. And uh, from behind you, you hear a whisper. You better watch closer next time, then. A shiver just goes up my spine, and I sit the fuck down. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the time passes relatively easily. It's not your first time holding a nighttime vigil, though it is strange to do so without the surroundings of the church and the candles. I mean, I'm burning apostles. I'm burning some incense. I'm praying to Suburban. I'm going through the scripture. I'm having a good time. It's fine. <laughs> and you reach the halfway point of the evening. And it is time, if you so choose, to wake Zira for her watch. I just gently push her shoulder a little bit. I'm like, hey, hey, it, can we can we switch now? I guess so. That <laughs> could be really mean. And just fly away with your blanket. <laughs> no, my blanket. <laughs> I'm sure it's not the first time that that's happened. I've left them up in trees before. I'm a jerk sometimes. Yeah, she's a real bitch. Peace be with you, but I'm going to bed. <laughs> um, so Yulia heads to get her rest. As Zira, you take over watch. And it is much more difficult for you. As where your sister attended the vigils and followed all the rituals... You know, something just always happened right before you were supposed to go in there. And wasn't it a damn shame <laughs> that you just had to go home and go back to bed? <laughs> and you can see the shadow as it moves lightly around you and begins to scratch into the dirt. It's slow and difficult to read in the low light of the evening. But you make out the word Lustra. Oh shit, it spelled it right. But it can't spell my name right. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Amigo. That's rough, buddy. Um, and the voice whispers to you, you know, you could be legendary at what you do. And even better, you could get paid. Ooh. Is that something you wish? I do like money. Seek out Lustra. There is much there for you and your sister. I don't think she really cares about money. She may not care about money, but I believe that let us say they will offer a prayer or two for her. Say a little prayer for you. That's right, say a little prayer for you. Uh -uh. Worry not, though, young one. Rest, and be assured that I will wake you 
if something happens. So you're the one that woke me before? You have been quite dutiful in your service to me, and I appreciate all that you have done. What kind of monster would I be if I could not do the same for you? I don't know. <laughs> rest. Do not rest. It is of no consequence. But I shall be here. Thank you. So, if you rest, you are woken as the voice says, I believe it is time. Your sister will wake momentarily. Perhaps it is best if you are awake before she does, so you do not have to explain. And with that, the sun rises, and Yulia, it's morning. Uh, you are accustomed to waking with the sun, as you normally have dawn duties. Mm. But it's strange. You don't hear your mother yelling in the background. Oh, this is nice. You Peaceful. Just, you just see <laughs> surrounding trees and Zira sitting up and packing together her bag. Oh, you actually stayed awake the entire night. Wow, okay. Rude. <laughs> I can do things. I am a night owl, after all. <laughs> No, I'm like really tempted to call bullshit on that. <laughs> not in real, not IRL, Kate, but just in <laughs> game. <laughs> All right, I didn't really need an explanation, but okay. So, shall we continue our journey? Between the two of you, have you decided where you're heading? Other than away from town. I mean, I... I don't have I any with, specific direction. I check with the coin. <laughs> uh, you do now, Zira. I do? Yep. Ah... Uh, Lustra! Yes, the oh, shadow... Lustra. The okay, shadow yeah. scratched Lustra into the dirt. It's a pastrami. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lustra pastrami. I do like pastrami sometimes. Let's follow the pastrami. <laughs> follow the pastrami. You travel for a couple days, and it's odd. You're not quite used to the pace, but with each passing day, you cover more and more ground, eventually reaching a small chasm with a bridge and two guards on your side. Oh, I've heard of this. I think we need to answer a couple of riddles and then they'll let it just by. Clearly wearing the markings that they are in service to Queen Solomenia. Who? <laughs> the Queen of Calturnia. Who? What? what? What's Calturnia? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and they greet the both of you. They're like, this strange to see folks on this side of the bridge. What, uh... Can we help you with this? Are you lost? No, actually, uh, we need to get across. <laughs> and what are you going across for? Do you have any papers or anything? Oh, God, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean... I take out a sheaf of, like, prayer, uh, from books from my prayer book, or pages from my prayer book, uh, like, some sheafs of, like, uh, sheet music, and I'm like, I, like, I have these. Uh, no, no, not, like, where you do you go? Yes, papers. yes, I said, are you the smart one here? And looks at you, Zira. I am, but that's not saying much. <laughs> oh no, no, no. Country, she's like country she's one of the smartest guess. people I knew or know. I regardless, where are you going? Lustra or Pastrami. <laughs> and do you know how to get there? Uh I have a little inkling. Excellent. That is all I am responsible for. Don't harm the bridge on your way over. Don't and, harm uh, the bridge? 
arm. Oh. And the bridge? And looks right at you, Yulia, and is like, listen, do not go over the side. Bad for your health. Uh, maybe bad for you, but I have these, and I point back to my wings. Uh, yeah, it must be nice to have wings. They, they will not help you here. You can't fly. Ah. I am horrified at this statement. <laughs> can can we find just out go? for yourselves, please? And they gesture that you can step over the bridge, and they remove their pikes. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yep. Thanks. Yep. You, You're thanks welcome. For Have your fun help. on the bridge. Have fun storming the, storm the castle. The castle. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And uh, as you step out onto the bridge, you feel a crushing weight. As oh God, I feel so heavy. <laughs> the guards kind of chuckle at you, <laughs> watching you like squat to walk as your weight is amplified by about five times. It I think is I would... incredibly difficult to walk, and flying, you are it's very concerned, would be out of the question. I can't you... generate that much lift. Well, your <laughs> wings have also taken on the same amount of weight. Yeah, so they're just kind of bending awkwardly. How long is this bridge? Uh, it's only about 30 feet across. Okay. But it is enough that attempting to cross the chasm anywhere else is essentially a, uh, a death sentence. Okay. All right. Let's, let's go. Zero. I feel so fat. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, How is this bridge holding up? That is great question, as the bridge appears to only be made of simple wood and ropes. Hmm. Alright. We, we try and get across as quickly as we can. Moving without on. bringing harm to the bridge. Without yes. bringing harm to the bridge. Exactly. Moving swiftly across, as swiftly as possible, it takes you ten minutes and you feel an intense sense of relief as you reach the other side. I feel so light and springy. <laughs> as the weight is removed. I jump up in the air and I start flying. Um, we don't have anything to roll on, but I'm going to say that you get a little queasy. It's like that moment where you first take off roller skates and put on sneakers. Oh and your body is very unsettled by the immediate activity. Okay, I fall back to the ground as gently as I can. You fall easy enough that you don't get hurt, but... I immediately find a bush and vomit. <laughs> <laughs> How are you taking this so well? Me? I don't know who else I'd be talking to. I'm not a bitch, no. Wow. <laughs> Yulia's face kind of scrunches up and she starts crying a little bit. <laughs> You've never actually called her a bitch to her face. I didn't mean it in a, in a mean way. That's fair. <laughs> On the other side of the bridge, a couple guards walk up and uh, are you quite well? You, you should not launch yourself so swiftly after that. <laughs> yeah, yep. and they can very, very quickly move the fuck out of the way. I, I see. Take your time. We have some, some buckets and uh, can get you cleaned up. Now, yes, he's gross. It happens to so many people. You would not believe the number of people that don't listen to the warnings. Those guards are jerks on the other side. <laughs> They're very mean. Did they not warn you not to fly afterwards? No. They no. just said don't fly across the bridge. They didn't say afterwards. Thankfully, I don't have wings. <laughs> well, thankfully, there's not another situation like this for quite a distance, but take care when you encounter 
the chasms here. You, you never know what what side effects they will present. Now, have you a destination? Uh, Lustra? Pastrami? No, yeah, but whichever one. I think they're the same place. Lustra, indeed. So you seek training. Training? Pastrami? Pastrami. You seek food. Uh, I can eat. <laughs> <laughs> You're up again at the mention of food. I, recommend, I don't know what pastrami is. I recommend <laughs> checking out the hero's respite when you arrive. It's quite the establishment. In fact, it's the only establishment, but still. Now, Lustra is, is some day's travel from here. Is it just the two of you? Yep. I think. Maybe... Yeah. You, we you encountered don't know some, how many people you are traveling with. We encountered some raccoon people earlier. They weren't with us. Ah, yes, the raccoon. Thankfully, they do not cross the bridge here. We have to... Know. Would they be physically capable of doing that? It, it depends on the day, but so far no one has been killed over the bridge. It's simply the chasm. If Don't lean over the edge. Don't push me, cause I'm comfortable to eat. <laughs> you know what? I don't have an issue with authority, so I'm not going to. It's a bad idea. <laughs> it definitely sounds like a bad idea. Now, if mm -hmm. you'd like to wait, perhaps a day or two, we can have a guard accompany you and guide you to Lustra. We have a couple that are in service. Are they nice? They are amenable. Have they taken sensitivity training? Uh, I don't believe we have anything like that for the Queen's Guard, but... Can they deal with tieflings? They deal with all manner of people. They are professional in what they do. <laughs> I, I just, I look over at Zira and I'm like, I shrug. <laughs> Try to keep down whatever I like, whatever's left in my stomach right now. <laughs> we do have a lovely stew we could share as well. I immediately throw up again. <laughs> I see. Perhaps not stew then. Perhaps uh, some bread. Would you like some road tack? I love bread. <laughs> do, do you have this pastrami that they speak of? <laughs> I'm I'm afraid I don't know what this pastrami is, but <laughs> me neither. But I, I was just wondering. Perhaps another day. <laughs> Very well. I, you are welcome to stay until your friend has recovered. If you wish, a guard can accompany you. But the roads are favorable during the daytime. Just be sure you camp somewhere safe at night. I recommend up a tree, if possible. I weakly give the guard a thumbs up. Some stew for the road, perhaps, and the guard will talk all those whole day. Do you need more bread? <laughs> yes, yes, here. And uh, <laughs> hands you two loaves of bread. I'm just <laughs> crying at this point. <laughs> Is she usually this weak of constitution? Yep. I see. Well, perhaps avoid Kilmarnock. I, I would not recommend... I, I don't think she could stomach some of the food that they serve there. Well, obviously, it has kill in the name. No, no, no. The, the food is quite delicious, but very well-spiced and spicy and... If she can't handle a walk across the bridge, I'm quite afraid she... Perhaps you are correct. Perhaps it might kill her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's a bit wimpy. It's okay. It, it happens. I, there, I, I raise a finger and I'm like... I, like you do wish for me. <laughs> Why? <laughs> and the guards, like, nudge each other. It's like, this is the most fun I've had all week. This is quite wonderful. 
So, would you like to wait for an escort, or would you like to continue on? These cards are being mean. They seem quite lovely to me. They're offering me bread. If they it's great. talk about stew one more time, and <laughs> I gag a little bit, but I don't throw up this time. You sure you don't want any? I shake my head yes. What was that? Uh, what? <laughs> don't you said test, you said yes. Don't test me, Zira. <laughs> um, I will drop your pack over that cliff or hide it in a tree. Don't tempt me. <laughs> how are you gonna do that if you're getting sick all the time? Oh, I will vomit on your head then. <laughs> <laughs> if you could stand up. I try standing up. <laughs> All I have to do is mention Stu and you throw up. No. No, I'm fine. I'm fine, I promise. <laughs> oh, you're so easy to mess with. <laughs> Why? What have I done? You ready to get going? I've been so nice to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's, let's go. Okay. Moving along from the guards' encampment, it's about a half day's walk remaining before you see a small caravansary on the side of the road where a number of people have set up tents and vehicles. And you can stop for the evening if you so choose, or you're, you may continue on through the evening. No, I'm going to pay attention to those guards and we'll set up camp somewhere close by the caravan, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> As you step into the caravansary area, you see someone approach. It's like, good evening. My name is Ericsson. I am in charge of this caravansary. It will be two silver each to stay for the evening. Do we have any money? <laughs> I will say Zira probably has enough to cover this. <laughs> she is smart enough not to stash everything in one spot. Of course yeah. she is. Like, I, I turn out my pockets and I'm like... I, I'm even <laughs> more impressed at this point. <laughs> because not only did she hide it, she hid it from your mom. Yes. That is no mean feat. <laughs> totally fair. Um, she's like, yes, yes. Find an open space and uh, thank you and tips a non-existent hat as he whistles and wanders off. What was he tipping? His head. But, no, he he like he motioned like he had some sort of like hat on. Oh yeah, he does like the full, like, hold the brim and tips it, even though there's nothing there. You know what, at least you didn't say milady. <laughs> come, come, milady. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> as you are setting up camp, a nearby caravan sends someone over and they're like, excuse me, um, did, did that gentleman stop you and make you pay for the evening? I he paid. Did. I... He also has an invisible hat, apparently. Yes, he... I'm afraid to tell you that you have been swindled, friends. Mm. There is no, there's no charge to stay here for the evening. I gotta go, and I'm gonna go back and try and steal from him. Okay. Um, it takes a couple hours before he is in a visible spot as another caravan approaches and he appears to be waiting to do the same game and sizes up the caravan. And how quickly are you approaching? Are you gonna let him do his deal? Or are you going to stop him ahead of time and take back your money? What would Rogian do? I'll let him do his deal and then I'll take back my money afterwards because then I get more money. Okay. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> so you hear him approach the caravan. Evening, friends. My name is Ericsson. This is my caravansary. If you wish to stay the evening, 
It will be one gold per person, as you appear to be a merchant caravan. And uh, the main rider starts arguing with him like, this is ludicrous. You can't just charge. And Erickson holds up a hand and says, listen, we it's safe here. We keep the fire burning all evening. I don't know what happens in other areas, but here we need to make a living. One gold a person, or please, be on your way. And with some heavy sighs, they offer three gold under what they would have to pay, ending up with a 12 gold pot that they hand over to this man. Yeah. He's like, yes, yes, I think you'll find that uh, back three spaces to the right, there is a much, uh, much accommodating space for a caravan of your size. You have yourselves a fine evening. And he moves off to the left-hand bit of the path. So it is up to you if you would like to follow. I do want to follow. Okay. So tracking him as he goes, you see him enter a pretty nicely appointed building. Um, not terribly large, about 15 feet to a side, and sets the gold down on the counter and begins making notes in a book. Okay. What would you like to do? Mm, is there any way... So, my sister's with me, right? Uh, that's a good question. Yulia, did you go with Zira, or are you attending to camp? I'm attending to camp. I was kind of bummed out that we got swindled so easily, and I'm just kind of poking a fire right now where our camp is set up. Aw, oh, damn. You didn't tell me what you were doing. And, uh, Zira, how is your perception? I have a negative one of perception. <laughs> okay, okay. I feel like, what? is this perception or investigation? We're gonna go with perception. Okay, but I have a plus six of sleight of hand, so is there any way that, like, does he look distracted at all? He looks um, focused on what he's doing. He's making a record and seems to be counting out the pieces that he was paid now. And I'm also very stealthy, so is there any way that I can, like, like, is he counting out all of the money that he has? Um, no, he's counting out the bag that they handed over and making a couple notes in a book on the counter and then goes to reach for a small safe mm -hmm. and is preparing to lock the coins away. Is there any way that I can, like, sneak up behind him and, like, go through his pockets mm. without him knowing? It's possible. I mean, is the safe in... Uh, well, I'm not here, but... Is the, the safe, safe is... in... Is it out in the open, or is it, like, behind something? Uh, it's underneath the counter where he's working. Okay. So are you just going for him, or are you looking around the shack? Or the... Not shack, but... The station. Well, I was just going for him, because I wanted my money back. Okay. I mean, you could always... Like, you know where he is now. Would it take him a long time to decamp, or could he just run with his uh, ill-gotten gains if he needed to? I mean, there is only one door in and out of this this building. There is a large window at the front that faces the incoming path, but that's about it. Hmm. There is the option of coming back to get me if you want, because I don't think the camp is very big, is it? The caravansary is, is pretty impressive. You could probably fit um, 15 to 20 traveling caravans with three trailers each. I guess, do you want to do this on your own, Kate, or do you want to bring me in? Well, I was hoping to have you as, like, a distraction. Oh, okay, right, I see. Like, you can just, like, uh, I could mention Stu, and you can throw up, and he'll be really <laughs> concerned. <laughs> 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 Uh, 
Okay, so it's up to you. Yeah, you can go back to camp and get her. Yeah, I'll do that. Just okay. don't tell me what you're doing. <laughs> okay. Because I'm like I'm a dumb person, so you get the more genuine uh, distraction out of me not knowing as much. <laughs> it's like I can be like, oh, I heard that you. This is the place to get stew around here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so going back to camp and obtaining Yulia, um, you have stuff set up. The, the tent is ready. I assume your bags are packed inside. Uh, I've tried to hide them a little better than when the rac or the rac raccoon 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 were uh, shuffling through them. Okay. Those little bastards. <laughs> um, okay, so you try and arrange things in a way that looks like your bags might not be in there. Yeah, and... They're just covered with blankets and pillows and stuff. <laughs> and uh, Zira, you can direct Yulia where you would like to go. Okay. Let's see. Do um, you want to go look around town? Or it's not really a town. This is I mean, strictly it's want, like a campground. I could kind you of want to go look around this caravan. Then I could kind okay. of use food right now, actually. Okay, I know a place. <laughs> All right, I'll follow you. Okay. I don't think I've seen this many like different people before. Yulia, this is no time to be racist. No, wow. no I'm just wow. <laughs> It's like um, rule number 23 in Suburban's Handbook. Don't be a racist. <laughs> so heading back out in the time it's taken you to go and get Yulia. Is he gone? No, no, no. He's back out on the path as a pair of riders have come in and goes over the same greeting. Good evening. My name is Erickson. Welcome to my caravansary. Uh, just the two of you this evening. It will be two silver each to stay. We do have a cadre of guards and keep the fire burning all night. I promise it is worth your time. And they grumble a little bit, but hand over the coin. My sense of justice. <laughs> and you see him head back to the building. And uh, you are able to track him well enough to see him in there. Julia, I thought, Sierra, I thought we were going for food. We are going for food. Oh, okay. I saw some, like, like a commissary back there, though. Like, I don't... No, trust me. I, kn I know where we're going. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you find yourselves in a position where you can see the building that Erickson is working in. Um, okay. Once again, recording something in... A book on the counter before moving to put the coins in the safe. So, so then you oh. swear the food is in this way? Yep. Okay, I, I just walk through the entrance. And he's like, uh, is there something I can assist you with, ma'am? I, I I was told that there was food in this tent. And first, this is this is not a tent. <laughs> Are you quite well? I mean She just wants some stew. Uh and I just throw up everywhere. Uh, yes. All Wonderful. over his shoes, all over him. I, I see, I see. It is going to be another of those days. And uh, you see him reach and ring a small bell and addresses something in the room. He's like, yes, could you perhaps... Or does he perhaps, have an unseen servant or something? Uh, perhaps gather some new garb and some food for our friends here. No, no, sir. Uh, we would prefer that you help us. I, I am helping you. I just, I, I do not wish to, I don't wish to touch this if you don't mind. Well, I do uh, mind. That's quite rude. I, do you wish to touch <laughs> someone's vomit? I wasn't the one that caused her to vomit. That was you. I believe it was you when you mentioned that uh, oh. that food oh. that you mentioned. What did I mention? 
If this is the result of that word, I will <laughs> not deign to say it. What, what word, word was it? <laughs> I'm just confused at this point. I don't know what's happening. I'm just throwing up. <laughs> it's quite fine. Do you require the services of a cleric? We do have one on staff. D we want your help. <laughs> I am merely a coordinator of the services here. I do not... I'm afraid I am not skilled in, in that manner. I thought we paid for silver and yeah. you would help Erickson. Yeah, yes, and he grabs a, a different bell. And, Stop uh, ringing that damn bell! <laughs> <laughs> you see someone come up in like half plate armor and they're <clears throat> step into the room she's like oh that's i see and touches a hand to you yulia as uh she casts a spell okay so uh, just time out do you have a plan kate i'm trying to distract him okay you distract him so i can go behind the desk and somehow get into the safe and get, get my money back. I feel like there is resolution of my issue right now, so we need to figure this out. Okay. All right, I trust you. So the cleric touches me. The cleric touches you and casts Lesser Restoration, restoring your uh, quite upturned stomach. And you watch as the, the vomit in the room disappears as a pair of floating clothes are brought to Erickson. He's like, I feel like we have some form of misunderstanding here. Is something the matter? Are you displeased with your stay? Are you asking me? Yeah, both of you. I'm gonna defer to the fast talker that my sister is supposed to be. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not very satisfied. No. Is there something we could do to improve your satisfaction? I, we do intend to maintain the caravansary to the best service of everyone. So you're the one that runs this? Yes, with help from and gestures to the, the cleric and the floating clothes. I couldn't do all of this on my own, but we strive very hard to keep fair prices and ensure that everyone is happy with their situation. Fair prices? Yes, you're traveling, you're not merchants, yes? Would, would it matter if we were? It certainly would, I... Why would it? Merchants are charged a higher rate because of the general disturbance <laughs> that some of their guards tend to bring. They hire riffraff rather than reputable people and tend to break things that we have to repair. But I heard that it was free to stay here. I am afraid... Please tell me it is not just the two of you that are here. You have another at your campsite, yes? No. I see. Victoria, it appears that... We need to wrangle the hooligans again. Come along. And uh, Erickson moves to step out of the the building and is walking towards camp. Okay, I follow him. And I guess you can stay behind. Yeah, I'll stay behind. Okay. Are so, the invisible clothes, are the clothes still floating there? No, the clothes have been set on the counter and the room and you have been magically cleaned. Well, that's good. I didn't bring an extra dress. <laughs> and, uh... Yulia, as Erickson leads you back to camp, you notice that your tent is in extreme disarray, and a few of your belongings have just been dragged out and dumped onto the dirt. Well, this seems unnecessary. I... I start happens. crying a little bit. <laughs> it happens from time to time. I apologize. We can... We can refund your stay here, of course. Can you... Was it a, a youngish lad, perhaps late 20s, uh, scruffed hair and a scar just, just so on his right cheek? Was it? Yes. He very accurately describes <laughs> the person that told you it should have been free. I think so. I'm, like, I'm fighting back tears at this point. 
I understand. If if you'll excuse me, we I need to alert the guards that there is a situation again before they cause more problems. And uh, he flips you a gold coin and says, we'll have someone come out and repair your tent. If you need any belongings fetched, please consider this gold as recompense for the troubles. Oh God, he isn't a swindler. We were swindled by the show. <laughs> so Zira, lacking the knowledge that this man is not a swindler. Oh no. <laughs> what you doing, buddy? Yeah, you told me nothing. Is he going to see that I'm trying to take his money? <laughs> I mean, he's probably not coming back for a few minutes as he's having this conversation with Yulia. But I doubt you're going to be alone for much longer. Have I stolen any money? Uh, do you want to have stolen money? Well, I was going to be like, you're... I stopped the people that you were looking for and I, took, I got the money. <laughs> Your thieves tools would allow you to pop the safe easily enough. And you could take just your money. There is roughly 50 gold in the safe in various um, coinage. Okay. Think very hard about what you want to do, Kate. What would Yulia do? <laughs> what would Zira do without the knowledge that this man didn't double cross her? At I this would point, take the money. Okay. All of it? All of it. Okay. Oh, God. So, taking all of the money, you abscond from the building. Oh, swiftly. God, I'm an accomplice! <laughs> <laughs> and you two can continue on your way to Lustra in relative ease, as that's where we're going to wrap up for the evening. <laughs> oh, my God. Crimes! Thank you for joining us for this episode of Calturnia. You can find us playing live every Monday over on Twitch at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Join us next week as the adventure continues and more story unfolds.